Hey team, Andre from High Performance Academy here. Welcome to another one of our webinars. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Plex Knock Monitor version three, uh, a really high-end audio and visual knock detection tool. Even, even actually calling it audio and visual knock detection tool is probably not doing justice to it, but obviously the whole webinar is around that. So we'll get into that in a moment. Before we dive into it though, just to bring you up to speed with what's been going on here around HPA over the last couple of weeks. And we're going to start with our latest giveaway. For those who don't know, we're almost always running a giveaway. We partner with some of the biggest names in the performance automotive industry. Uh, one month it might be an ECU or a PDM. Sometimes it might be a dash. It could be a set of engine building tools, wiring tools, you name it. But uh, I can guarantee that it is a really, really uh, well thought out and genuinely useful giveaway. Uh, doesn't matter where in the world you are, we will ship free of charge to your door as well. Our current giveaway, we are partnered, we have partnered with uh, ECU Master and we're giving away one of their PMUs or power management units. Uh, we jump across to my laptop screen. Uh, this is what we're looking at here. Uh, so this is their relatively new PMU 24. Uh, I'm actually a really big fan of the ECU Master PMU product to the point that we are running the PMUs in both our SR86 endurance car and shortly we will be fitting one of these uh, PMU24s into our CRX endurance car as well. Uh, what I like about this particular unit is that it is really, really fully functioned, very, very flexible, uh, but it's also really cost effective. It's one of the uh, better priced power distribution modules on the market. Now, if I'm talking in a foreign language to some of the people listening and you've never heard of what a power distribution module is, uh, to go back a step in simple terms, it's basically a way of eliminating your relays and fuses, which are obviously an essential part of the power delivery circuit for pretty much everything that's in your car. And instead we're doing this with solid state electronics. Benefit being that uh, we're very flexible on how we set up fusing limits and current limits, everything for all of the channels. Uh, how the different inputs and outputs here uh, are actually switched. We can switch them via a, a direct wired input via a switch, which would be the conventional way. Uh, but these days we're seeing more and more people go across to CAN switch pads, which means that we can have maybe a 15, 15 key CAN switch pad to control so many functions of the car. And in order to wire these up, it's just a simple four wire connection, CAN high, CAN low, power and earth. So it's really, really dramatically simplifying the wiring. Uh, of course, we can also command certain functions directly with a CAN message from the ECU. So for example, if you want to run your fuel pumps, this can be done with no wiring at all, just via the CAN bus with a message requesting the pump to be switched on. Exactly the same with the uh, thermofans, just for example. So really, really flexible. Uh, and the nice function here is that with a conventional fuse and relay system, uh, once that fuse actually blows, we have to physically replace the fuse. Maybe you're running a circuit breaker, in which case you can actually reset the circuit breaker uh, while you're still in the car. But you know, generally it's going to actually require an action from the driver. Uh, with these power distribution modules we can electronically control the fusing and then we can actually set them to retry circuits a certain number of times. So this is a really good limp home function, uh, particularly powerful for race cars if you just need to get the car back to the pits. Uh, you can shut down certain functions maybe if the alternator fails, so you're only using the mission critical functions giving you the best chance of getting the car back to the pits. Anyway, it's a high level view of power distribution modules. As I've mentioned, I reckon the ECU Master is a really good value proposition in terms of the price point and the functionality uh, with this giveaway even better value proposition because it's free to enter there is no catch here uh, so you can get uh, into the draw there's a few other things you can do to get yourself uh, some more entries uh, you're gonna have to move quick there is only one day left to get your name into the draw and uh, we don't get thousands or tens of thousands of entries into these draws so you actually have got a really really good chance of winning so again no catch don't miss out I'll get Geordie to drop a link into the comments that you can follow uh, to get your name into the draw. Uh, now I just wanted to give a bit of an update on uh, what's been going with the CRX project and um, for those who are new to that we've got an EF a Honda CRX powered by a K20. Purchased this as a going concern. It's a little rough around the edges. It's a typical club car that was very competitive and very fast but uh, you know 
had been uh, raced over a number of seasons and was starting to show the signs of a little bit of abuse and neglect and we just wanted to give it a bit of a birthday that has uh, spiraled out of control as this often does and uh, while we were waiting for the gearbox which I'll get onto in a moment we decided that we would uh, go a little bit further and, and sort of really get this finished off to a, a great standard and address some of the things that we kind of hadn't had a chance to do last season when we were racing it so if we jump across to my laptop screen here uh, this is what uh, Brandon has been working on at the moment this is the front of the chassis leg on the right hand side which in our case is the driver's side and uh, we can see here We've got a fairly elaborate mount here coming down to uh, a honed uh, splitter mount. So obviously with a front splitter, this is an aerodynamic device. There is a fair bit of load on it, particularly if it is going to actually function as you'd expect and produce uh, a measurable amount of downforce. So these have to be mounted really, really rigidly. Uh, we also want the flexibility to actually change the mounting. So uh, the height of the splitter potentially or the angle of the splitter and uh, the honed mount does give us a lot of flexibility on that uh, also makes it really nice and easy to actually remove the splitter which sometimes can be uh, helpful for transport so uh, that's going on at the moment was requirement to uh, perform a little bit of uh, cutting and shutting on those chassis legs as well because we have moved to a daily dry sump system and uh, just the poly location was going to actually interfere with some of the chassis as it was I'll just get my presentation pointer up and running here whoops not like that I won't uh, if I can because it's going to make it much much easier to show everyone what I am talking about right there we go so just to prove point it is working so uh, yeah as we can see here uh, we've got adjustability at the back here for uh, the angle of the splitter uh, adjustability here which goes into uh, the holes multiple holes that uh, Brandon's actually made on this mount as well uh, so again we've got the ability to adjust the height of that uh, obviously there's a fair bit of work left to go here uh, while I'm talking about this as well uh, this particular mount bracket if you like here uh, it's all been designed using Fusion 360 um, just a, another example of how powerful Fusion 360 is for home use essentially it's free and it's not just about 3D models and you know sending parts out for CNC machining uh, a lot of what we're using Fusion 360 here at HPA to do is to make up these relatively elaborate uh, plasma or laser cut um, mounts they can be then CNC bent as well and the cost of getting these done by a metalworking company and having them shipped to us uh, our metalworking company is actually right next door making it really easy uh, the, the cost of that versus how long it would take to manually uh, cut all those lightning holes out and manually fold it, it it's just a no-brainer and it makes things so much easier to do uh, it also improves the uh, sort of professionalism of your project so this is really available to anyone home enthusiasts who are building project cars in their back sheds it, it doesn't have to be a high dollar item uh, if you're in the uh, the states uh, the likes of send cut send uh, offer the service as well you can send them a DXF file and uh, they will laser cut the parts and ship them out to you a few days later so uh, it really is a, a very powerful tool if you are interested in learning more about uh, how to use Fusion 360 for these sorts of tools we do have our 3D modeling and CAD uh, tutorial uh, course that is available you can find that at hpacademy.com forward slash courses or maybe I'll actually uh, task Geordi with chucking a link into the comments that you can follow that will take you to that all right so that's our split amount um, the other element that uh, Brandon's been working on here again using Fusion 360 and the sheet metal working tools uh, is these crush tubes that are going to uh, basically on the front of the chassis rails and um, these will support our front crash bar that will go right in behind that front splitter and front bumper uh, let's also mount the cooling package the radiator and the oil cooler off this um, the EF CRX chassis what we have found out after a season of racing it is that it is incredibly light but the reason it is incredibly light is because the sheet metal that the car is made out of is paper thin and unfortunately while this is probably ideal for running around 
picking up groceries etc like the car was pretty much designed for uh, under the stresses and strains of circuit racing we quickly found that a lot of uh, cracks were forming in the bodywork and the chassis itself which obviously is uh, both scary and less than ideal i've gone some ways to rectify this with the uh, chromoly subframe uh, that i've talked about in the past in one of these pre-shows so i won't uh, dwell on that again but uh, again just to try and reduce the chances of severe damage to the rest of the chassis uh, in the event of a frontal impact uh, these should go some way to absorbing some of that impact and uh, for those wondering no we haven't run fea on it it is a bit of a, a gut feel but i mean ultimately i can see these working a little bit better than a solid bar and uh, not transferring those forces back into the chassis legs so uh, we'll see how that all goes once uh, we actually get the car back on track uh, now I mentioned the gearbox, uh, so a big part of this upgrade was that we ever had nothing but trouble with uh, the stock 6 speed gearbox, or well, say stock but it's actually run a gear, running a gear X close ratio gear set, uh, still synchro mesh, maybe, just maybe we could put some of the gremlins down to uh, my business partner Ben who let's be honest is a little bit uh, rough on the gear, um, but that notwithstanding uh, Getting consistent reliability problems with gearboxes is not really that much fun. Uh, we had such a good run with the Hollinger uh, six-speed sequential gearbox that we're running in our 8.6 that we decided to go down the same path. Uh, now, unfortunately, though, we did order that gearbox back in March, uh, and we were talking at the time with Hollinger about delivery in August, which would have allowed us to compete in our endurance racing series here in New Zealand. Uh, Hollinger are really struggling at the moment it would seem with staffing issues and uh, basically providing an ETA on gearbox delivery is difficult if not impossible. Uh, we are hoping that we'll have that gearbox here in uh, at least before the end of the year and once we've got that it should be a relatively quick and easy process to bolt everything together. A nice element with that is that Hollinger could provide us with a full 3D CAD model so basically uh, Brandon and Connor have built the entire front end of the car uh, in Fusion 360 so we should, should just bolt in famous last words. Uh, one element that we did just receive from Hollinger recently is this little remote shift mount. Um, we ran paddle shift in the 8.6 and it is great uh, but it does take a little bit away from the sort of driver skill, driver involvement, I mean it is a bit like playing PlayStation or uh, you know on a simulator. Um, we wanted to keep a lever in the CRX, a little bit uh, more involving from the driving standpoint uh, so that's why we've gone with this unit. Uh, so this will be obviously mounted to the center transmission tunnel uh, it does run a hollinger strain gauge gear lever so uh, that's the wiring that we can see here uh, this will be connected in this case to an mtron kv8 ecu uh, and that will allow for closed loop gear shifts and the uh, premise behind this is that on the upshift as we pull back on that gear lever because of the back cut on the dogs there's no way under full throttle we're going to be able to actually pull uh, the, the gearbox out of gear uh, because the back cut like just holds those dogs in place so tightly. So what it requires is a torque reverse or torque interrupt. A few ways we can do this, we can use an ignition retard, we can lift the throttle but generally we don't want to do that. Less of a problem on a naturally aspirated engine but definitely on a turbocharged engine uh, we just will lose boost response if we have to lift the throttle. So an ignition retard or an ignition cut or a fuel cut or a combination of those is generally the preferred method and uh, basically the, the pressure on the, on the gear lever uh, is detected via that strain gauge, a signal is sent to the ECU and once the, the uh, force on the gear lever exceeds a certain threshold then the ECU will instigate the torque reduction uh, and again I've mentioned the options there uh, that allow the next gear to be engaged at wide open throttle and then once the uh, gear is deemed to be uh, engaged properly there's a gear position sensor that senses when the gears are engaged then the torque is reintroduced so uh, it allows for lightning fast shifts in the region of uh, maybe sort of 
30 to 60 milliseconds. I mean, there's a lot of variables in there as well. Uh, conversely, on the downshift, uh, that strain gauge will sit generally the input uh, under normal circumstances will sit around 2.5 volts. So uh, the ECU can actually tell if we're pushing forward for a downshift uh, or we're pulling back for an upshift. So uh, when we downshift, uh, because this will be converted to drive by wire, uh, the ECU will auto blip as well. Uh, you could argue there that takes away some of the driver skill, and I'd absolutely agree. Uh, what we're trying to do though is get consistency and also uh, reduce dog wear. Uh, it's very easy with a manually actuated uh, dog engagement gearbox for a driver who doesn't get the shifts quite right to very quickly round off and damage the dog rings and then we get straight back to the problems with uh, reliability of our gearbox which is obviously what we're trying to avoid. If you like that video make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week and if you like free stuff we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.